Do you like your replica guns, but would prefer them to be made in their original country? And maybe in the original factory? Well, today I have a trio of Makarov pistols that have all been made by Baikal in Russia. Hello and welcome to AAR On Air. We do seem to be seeing a lot of Russian guns, or Russian replica guns, on the air gun scene. Well, this time it's both Russian replica guns made in Russia. You know, we all have images of things we know little or nothing about. It's like reading a book. We imagine what the characters may look like. Or years ago, we listened to the radio, and when we saw the DJ, there were nothing like we expected. I suppose that has gone now, because it seems everyone is a celebrity, and have their faces, and probably much more, on full display 24-7. Where am I going with this? Well, I had this image of Russian engineering, which I suppose started in the early days of the space race when NASA had everything so clean, new, and well-polished. But Yuri Gagarin was in a rusty metal box surrounded by old plumbing pipes and bare wires, or so it seemed. Now, I never gave it another thought, because after experiencing the superb engineering capabilities of Edgun, I see things differently, more 21st century. Then I was given these Makarovs to check out. And that old feeling and image of the incredibly brave cosmonaut came flooding back. Regulars to AAR On Air will know I don't do unboxing videos. I just don't see the need to show someone how to get into a box. But take a look at the box and you'll see why that old feeling returned. The box itself feels like an old 60s throwback. And when you open it, the gun is wrapped in oil-stained brown paper. Is this a clue to the engineering? Maybe a trip back in time? Or could it be a more eco-friendly way of packing guns? Anyway, on with the review, and let's take a look at these Makarovs. Well, they are the right size and weight and actually feel pretty heavy. No plastic used on these guns other than the grip cover, that is. The top slider is steel with a cutout for the ejector. The sights are open and non-adjustable, both front and rear. The bottom half feels like cast, but the kind of cast they used to make the old dinky toys out of, only thicker. It feels quite rough, as though they forgot to put it through the final stage of the finishing process. The dropout, very simple skeletal magazine and CO2 holder is made the same, and in spite of its cutaway makeup, still feels very heavy. Fitting the CO2 is about as simple as it gets. Drop in the CO2 and tighten the what feels like an oversized grub screw. Loading the BBs feels as though they decided on the size of the spring they needed and then fitted the next heaviest you're much better off using the supplied tool to pull the spring back rather than risk the mousetrap-like inevitability of losing part of your finger end. It does have a slot to allow you to keep it open, thankfully. And then you simply load the BBs in through the top. Once loaded, release the spring, but Again, watch your fingers or you're going to lose some. This seems to be a theme running throughout the construction of this gun. That of simple and yet arguably over-egged construction. Oh, and a smell of oil on your hands from the gun, which is quite coated in what smells like Castrol GTX. 
I'm starting to visualise Yuri Gagarin again in his oversized plumber's bin. The safety on the left of the gun needs a bit of muscle to use. Not a problem, but it keeps that over-egged feeling fresh in the mind. The trigger is metal and again is a little heavy. The gun is single or dual action. If you shoot it without first cocking by either pulling back the hammer or having three shredded wheat and trying that top slider, my trigger gauge was off the scale before it fired. Cock it first and the trigger pull weight drops to seven and a half pounds. Not for the faint hearted then. Well that's okay because if pulling the slider takes that much effort, the blowback action is going to feel amazing, right? Wrong. It isn't blowback, I'm afraid. It is feel strippable, though, in exactly the same way as the original. And when stripped, it becomes evident why it takes so much effort to pull back the top slider. The spring inside is off the front suspension unit of a 1970s Ford Cortina. Well, not exactly, but they are over-egging things again. You know, it seems like I'm having a go at this gun, but it must be said, if you like your replicas to feel like they were built as the original and using the same materials and construction methods, then this not only meets those requirements, but even seems as though it was from that era. The feel of the materials and the construction and the smell of old-fashioned oils. It's like holding a solid piece of metal and would blow somebody's head clean off after you've found enough strength to pull the trigger, that is. So, what about power then? Well, naturally, I put this through the chrono and found it to be very consistent on power, but only gave an average of 374 feet per second, which, using the 5.37 grain steel BBs, gave 1.67 foot-pounds or 2.26 joules, so not overly powerful. What about the now famous Dust Devils? Well, I managed to get three readings using them, which were all over the place. Then I realised they were starting to explode in the barrel. <laughs> A first for me, an interesting experience, but pretty definitive that the gun doesn't like them. Target work then, usual 8 metre range. Here we go. Not bad at all from such a heavy trigger and fixed open sights. I was quite impressed and I actually enjoyed shooting it, which was evident by the number of shots at target. Well, this gun is available in these three different finishes. Standard black and Bakelite finish or a nickel finish with black grip and rather fancy camo version if you prefer. It does feel as though it's been wrapped. The writing on the sides is quite tastefully done and the serial number is stamped on the slider, the body and the underside of the magazine. Conclusion. Well, I still can't get the 60s space race feeling out of my mind and this gun feels more like it's been found at the back of the factory where it was made during the Cold War and you're holding a real piece of history. It would have been amazing if it was a blowback with the force of that spring. It would probably only have been good for about 10 shots though, but what an incredible 10 shots that would have been. It probably feels the most realistic replica I've used because it makes you feel it was really made all those years ago. But I can't help feeling this is going to be a Marmite gun and you will either love it or give it a wide berth. As the KGB would say, spicy bro, ze prosmodre. Thanks for watching.